Welcome to Southern Virginia and the South Boston Speedway for today's South Boston 150. A gorgeous afternoon for racing. I'm Rick Allen alongside Phil Parsons. Temperature 70 degrees. It's calm winds and a clear forecast for the day. Let's hear from our poll winner. Darrell Wallace Jr. is with Derek Pertisiglio. Guys, in this race one year ago, this U.S. Army Toyota of Darrell Wallace Jr. finished deep in the field due to a flat tire late in the race. But he's looking for redemption this year. Darrell, you're on the pole for today's race. What are some of the, th some of the things you've got to watch out for? Uh, Definitely double zero. I mean, he's fast. Uh, you know, the, the car last year when Ryan Truex was in it was really fast. So I think he's going to be the tough co contender here. And then Sergio Pena, my teammate, uh, he's going to be fast. So we just got to keep it out front and keep our nose clean and be there at the end. That's uh, the game plan pretty much for every race. This is a rain out race. Last night was supposed to be raced at night. Is it going to make any difference to how you get around the track today, being that the track is going to be in the sun all day? Um, I think that as, as the race goes on, it's going to get start getting more greasier and slippier. So I think we're going to have to save our stuff, like I said, be there at the end and uh, just see where we pan out. So hopefully uh, it doesn't fall off too bad and we can take the checker flag home with us tonight. Well, guys, like always in the NASCAR k and Pro Series, saving your equipment to the end is key. Thanks, Derek. Phil, what are the storylines for this race? Well, tight confines. This is a four-tenths of a mile racetrack with a wall on the inside of the corners. Lap traffic can become an issue because of those tight confines. And the, usually the car that wins this race is the guy that turns the center of the corner the best. The guy that can get that thing turned and get off the corner. Once again, we want to find out a little bit more about the drivers in this series with today's BioBlast. driver number number 96 Chevrolet. I started off in quarter midgets about five, six years ago. We did that for about two years. Um, and then uh, last year we did the super late model series throughout uh, the fast car series in Florida. My goals in this series are uh, to get a top five finish in uh, the championship at the end of the year and uh, definitely get a bunch of top tens. I would absolutely love to get a win this year. That'd be, uh, that'd be awesome. I'm Ben Kennedy and that's your K&M Bioblast. 19-year-old Ben Kennedy balancing schoolwork with racing. We've got an interesting feature for you featuring Derek Pernasiglio. You're going to want to enjoy this. You know, tracks across the country are known for their food in the concession stands. Martinsville Speedway is about 20 minutes away from here, and they're known for their Jesse Jones hot dogs. But here at South Boston, it's this, the South Boston Bologna Burger. Now, one of our own speed colleagues, Elliot Sadler, ate 16 of these in one sitting one night here at the track, and this one is number one for me. Mmm. Guys, I love my job. I think he might have got a little paper when he bit into that one. What do you think? <laughs> it looked like. It sounded like it anyway. <laughs> We're going to see the green flag when we come back to South Boston. Stay with us. Welcome back to South Boston, Virginia, the South Boston Speedway. It's the 150 here on Speed, your motorsports authority. Want to take a look at this four-tenths mile racetrack, Phil, the particulars. Yeah, a lot of history at this racetrack. It started out actually as a quarter mile. They extended to a third and paved it, and now four-tenths of a mile. You see 12-degree banking in the corner, straightaways 10 degrees. Look how short the straightaways are. This is a tight little racetrack. It's like a football field for a straightaway, and it's amazing how fast they can go. Here's our starting grid, Darrell Wallace Jr., grab the poll once again. Our most recent winner, Brett Moffat, on his outside. Yeah, two-time winner, Matt DiBenedetto, in row number two. There's Eddie McDonald alongside Benny Gordon back in row number seven. Ben Kennedy will start this race 15th. Back in the field a bit further. Zach Germain starts 21st. DJ Shaw, son of our former champion, Dale Shaw. How about Clay Campbell? He'll start this race 25th. Everyone knows Clay Campbell is the president of Martinsville Speedway just up the road. That's what he does for his day job. <laughs> Green flag out. We're underway from South Boston. A nice little jump by Darrell Wallace Jr. to get the lead. Goes down and hugs that yellow line right behind him. It's Brett Moffat in the double zero. Moffat taking over that seat after Ryan Truex has moved on to the nationwide series with Michael Waltrip Racing, but two time champion. Ryan Truex and that team. Yeah, I talked to Mike Grichy, crew chief on this double zero car, and he said, boy, they haven't really lost a thing with Brett Moffat. Said he has good feedback, a good feel for a car, and man, was he good at Greenville. First time in six years, somebody led the entire distance. He led all 150 laps. Impressive performance for young Brett Moffat. Pretty impressive so far for Darrell Wallace Jr., keeping 
that double zero car Brett Moffat at bay. Difficult racetrack here. You, Phil, you mentioned the wall on the inside of this racetrack, and then the the change from the surface when you come out of the turn. It's almost a little bump right there. For more on this race, let's talk to Derek Pernisiglio. Traditionally at this race, we've always seen one car rise up and dominate over the others. Last year it was Max Gresham. Two years ago it was Brett Moffat, and the year before that it was Brian Eichler. The key to this race, get the car set up and running good, get a good qualifying spot, and you put yourself in position to win. Well, that double zero looks awfully good. He, uh, he's really able to turn that center, one of our storylines of things to watch. He's really able to turn that center, but not able to gain that whole, whole bunch on uh, Darrell Wallace Jr. right now. Yeah, Sergio Pena has been holding on to that third spot, and then behind him, Matt Benedetto in the top four. But since the drop of the green flag, it's been Darrell Wallace Jr. has been able to keep Brett Moffitt about two car lengths back from him. Running very strong in that Army car. See that yellow line that is not out of bounds. That's just a suggestion as to where the <laughs> bottom of the racetrack is. And some are heeding to that suggestion, and others are not. Darrell Wallace Jr. now a three car length lead over Brett Moffat. Seems to have that car hooked up early in this race. Starting this race in the seventh spot was the 18 of Max Gresham. He's moved up to six, so he's taken one spot away. Derek, what's happening with the 18 team? The number 18 of Max Gresham is feeling very confident behind the wheel. As a matter of fact, PR rep John Close just came up to me and passed me a note, and he said, the car is perfect right now. He's not pushing the issue, and he's faster than the cars in front of him. And Corey LaJoy would say, well, wait a second. I'm pulling away from him. How does that work? <laughs> Corey LaJoy running in the fifth spot just in front of that 18 of Gresham. Max won this race last year from the pole driving for Joe Gibbs Racing. A little bit of a problem for the 07 right in front of him. Corey LaJoy slid up the racetrack. I saw a little bit of smoke. Yeah, a little smoke. It looks as though he is going to make his way onto pit road right now. He's slowing on the racetrack and going to make the hard left turn onto pit road. So LaJoy with problems in the 07 early on. It probably will be more than likely terminal. Saw a little bit of smoke down there when he slid up the racetrack a little bit allowing Max Gresham to get underneath him. Still green flag racing. Darrell Wallace Jr. in front of Brett Moffitt. They're running one and two. Sergio Pena holds on to that third spot. Wallace able to hold about five car lengths over Brett Moffitt. Early in this race, Derek talked about having to save your stuff. Darrell Wallace Jr. talked about having to save your equipment to have something at the end. And, you, you know, you don't, you don't have to slow down to do that you, you can just make sure you don't spin the tires right now Darrell Wallace Jr. he's not necessarily abusing his car even though he's opened up a six car length lead over Brett Moffat starting off it's all been green flag laps Darrell Wallace Jr. out in front he talked about the track could get slick as the sun beats down on this racetrack we take a look back Eddie McDonald and Benny Gordon battling for the 11th spot just outside of the top 10 Eddie McDonald a six time winner in the series right in front of Eddie McDonald that's the nine of Chase Elliott had a great top five run at Greenville trouble into the wall the 97 of Tanner Berryhill so got up high on this racetrack which you never see Tanner Berryhill up against the wall Daryl Wallace Jr. will bring the field to the green flag when we come back to South Boston. Welcome back to South Boston for the South Boston 150 here on speed about ready for the restart on lap 23 Darrell Wallace Jr. in front of Brett Moffitt Sergio Pena just behind him in third good restart for Moffitt and Darrell Wallace Jr. holding on to those top two spots Thought for a second that Sergio Pena may be able to get underneath Brett Moffitt wasn't able to do it Matt Benedetto in the 15 just behind Sergio Pena. You know, in early 2010, the Toyota All-Star Showdown, Sergio Pena battled with Joey Logano for the win, and it was in. It ended up where Joey Logano edged him out. But we really thought that Sergio Pena was going to have a phenomenal 2010, and he ended up with a best finish of six last year. It didn't quite pan out for Sergio Pena, but he came out of nowhere in that showdown. But new crew chief on board this year, Eric Holmes, championship-winning crew chief from the West came over here now as Sergio Pena's crew chief Matt Goslin. So uh, good good experience on the on top of the pit box. So maybe that'll be the difference. Good 
turn around for Sergio Pena. Darrell Wallace Jr. wants to keep the momentum going that he has. He's already got two wins in the Canyon Pro Series East. Now a good battle. On the inside, Ryan Gifford trying to take the spot away from Coleman Presley. Good battle. Coleman made his debut at Greenville in the series with a great runner-up finish. 22-year-old on the outside. Coleman Presley, Ryan Gifford on the inside. Also 22 out of West Winchester, Tennessee. It's Andrew Smith, the 62 car right in front of these two. Looks like Coleman Presley's going to hold on to the spot. Ryan Gifford. Trying to get a nose back underneath, but can't do it. Ryan has a couple top five finishes here. Has a runner-up finish in 2009, and then finished fourth in this race last year. Running strong with the Toyota, just behind Coleman Presley. It's Michael Cherry, the eight car, up in front of the 62 of Andrew Smith. And we're seeing Coleman Presley look to the inside of Smith. Now, out front, you still see a big lead. Darrell Wallace Jr. as we've completed 30 laps of the 150 scheduled. Just a 60 mile race. This is really a sprint Phil. It really is and uh, you know it seems like once we get racing that gap from first to second is about the same the entire time. So those guys may be just riding a little bit. And Andrew Smith just in front of Coleman Presley. Looks like Smith might be slowed down just a bit. By that eight of Cherry. 14 of Coleman Presley is part of a new three car team X team racing. He along with Matt DiBenedetto and Alex Bowman made their debut at Greenville. All three finishing in the top five. What an impressive performance. Right out of the gate. You see Cherry just in front. That's 62 of Andrew Smith and then Coleman Presley in the 14. You had mentioned earlier the yellow line just a suggestion. Yeah, a a lot of those, suggestion. A lot yeah. of those guys aren't adhering to that suggestion. Cutting the corner as they come out of both two and four. See Andrew Smith his best finish last year came at Lee New Hampshire with a sixth place run. You, you search for get grip wherever it is on the racetrack. It, we came here back with the Bush cars back in the day back in the in the late 90s and we ran the top of the racetrack. And then now these guys are running right around the bottom. Darrell Wallace Jr. has been out front every lap. Brett Moffitt still giving chase but Still about five car lengths back from him. You know that's amazing. That that's not much of a gap right there. But that's about a half a straightaway. <laughs> At this racetrack, it is Eddie McDonald in front of that nine of Chase Elliott. Again, Chase Elliott just 15 years old, chasing down Eddie McDonald. That's Ben Kennedy right behind Chase Elliott. Remember we met met him in our bio blast here a little while ago, the, before the start of this race. The difference in age between the 71 and the nine, he's half his age. <laughs> Eddie McDonald's 30 years old, Chase Elliott 15. New rule this year for the Canaan Pro Series East and West. They allowed 15 year olds, and we've had 15 year olds run uh, in the West Series as well. Right now, it's Chase Elliott trying to be the star of the East as he chases down Eddie McDonald. We saw Eddie McDonald racing with Benny Gordon a little bit earlier. Benny's been able to get by Eddie and move up to the back of that next pack right behind the two of Ryan Gifford. A lot of yellow stripes on the back bumpers of these race cars indicating rookie status. A lot of drivers trying to use this series to move up the right. Oh, trouble. Oh. Problem on the racetrack. Zach Germain gets turned around going into turn one. That was right in front of our leaders. Darrell Wallace Jr. Brett Moffat getting by. Let's take a look and see what happened to Zach Germain here coming off turn number four. See right in the middle of our screen there. There may have been a little bit of contact. That's the 51 of Brandon Haley getting by. Not necessarily, but uh, could have been. He was right behind Zach Germain as he was going into turn number four. That brings out our second caution. Quick break and we'll be right back. Getting ready for the restart. Darrell Wallace Jr. on the inside. Brett Moffat on the outside. Sergio Pena and... Matt DiBenedetto making up row number two. Green flag back in the air. Another great restart for Darrell Wallace Jr. Darrell Wallace Jr. has been on it on these restarts. Sergio Pena now inside of Brett Moffat. Side by side for second. Trying to take the position away. Sergio Pena has the preferred line right there on the yellow line. As they battle for second, here comes Brett Moffat. Surges off of turn number four and takes the spot back. Yeah, that double zero has been strong. You see him all the way down below the yellow line down on this end of the racetrack. And then he was able to get the advantage on Pena from on the outside and the other. And now looks to the inside of 
Darrell Wallace Jr. for the lead. Trying to take the top spot away. Darrell Wallace Jr. has it. Here comes Brett Moffitt. Found something on the bottom of this racetrack. It's almost like Brett Moffitt says, OK, I've been riding, and now it's time to go. Shadowing the tire marks all the way around this racetrack for almost 40 laps, and now trying to take that top spot away. Darrell Wallace Jr. still with the top spot. Michael Cherry on the outside of Coleman Presley in the 14. They're side by side right behind the 62 of Andrew Smith. There's Ryan Gifford, the two car. Another one of the revolution cars, teammate to the eight of Michael Cherry. Ryan Gifford trying to get by that eight of Michael Cherry. There's Benny Gordon, the 66, Chase Elliott in the nine. All racing up inside the top ten. He's still going for the ace. Oh, oh, contact! Ryan Gifford gets into the back of the eight, and Cherry goes around. Well, I guess that's one way to take the spot away. <laughs> and it's his teammate. He spins his teammate to take the spot. Take another look. Good hard racing here. Looks like Ryan Gifford is able to get in the throttle just a little bit quicker than Michael Cherry. That's all it took was that slight nudge. So Gifford gets into the eight. The eight goes around. No contact with the, the barrier. So he'll come on to pit road. A little confusion on pit road between he and the 12 of Daniel Suarez. When we come back, green flag will fly once again. Welcome back to South Boston. 150 after 54 laps. Darrell Wallace Jr. has been out front every lap. Brett Moffat on his outside. Green flag back in the air. Most of the racetracks we go, that inside line is such an advantage on the restarts, and it certainly has proven that today. Sergio Pena looks strong. And the green flag came back out, but has settled back into his third spot. Matt Benedetto on the outside in that 15. These two up front, Darrell Wallace Jr., as well as Brett Moffitt, continue to battle for the lead. Brett Moffitt trying a shorter line around this racetrack. It's a short racetrack already, but he's trying to shorten it up. Yeah, four tenths of a mile. He wants to make it a third of a mile. Side by side, Max Gresham in the 18. Trying to take the spot away from the 62 of Andrew Smith. Boy, Brett Moffat with all four tires down below the yellow line are really, really turning well. Amazing the speed you can get on a four-tenth mile speedway. Nearly 100 miles an hour around here. Yeah, you wouldn't, you wouldn't think that. You would think you'd run about 60 or 70 miles an hour, but uh, these cars with well over 600 horsepower can really get it done here. And Goodyear has a great buy supply tire that uh, will allow them to do that. There Wallace Jr. now a little bit of a cushion over Brett Moffitt in that double zero. He's been able to put about five car lengths between first and second in this race. As we see Matt Benedetto now looking on the high side of Sergio Pena, now ducking back down to the low side. That's for third. These two cars here have definitely been the class of the field. Nobody's been able to stay with them through the first 60 laps of this race. Brett Moffitt continuing to cut feet off of this racetrack by going well below the yellow line. Looks like what he gains through the center of the corner, though he loses a little bit up off the corner. Looks like when he goes from the transition from the apron of the racetrack down below the yellow line to the banking, it looks like he loses the back end just a little bit. Keeps that one to two car length distance between one and two. Darrell Wallace Jr. holding on to the spot. And right behind him, it's Brett Moffitt. Again, Moffitt won the first race of the year Greenville Pickens. Former winner here. Remember, he won back in 2009 his first career victory. Battle for the seventh spot. Andrew Smith, Ryan Gifford. Andrew Smith has done a nice job in this race so far. Andrew Smith starting eight. Ryan Gifford just behind him. Ryan Gifford, part of the RCR Team Dillon developmental program, basically on loan to Revolution Racing. These two stay nose to tail as they work around the 410th mile racetrack. How much are you on the brakes at this racetrack, Bill? Just a little bit. You really want that car to roll through the center of the corner, so you just check the speed when you get down to the end of the straightaway, and then, and then you're off the brakes, so that car will roll through the center. 
see the front ends going down just as they enter the turns. Ryan Gifford gets a little bit loose down there on the flatter part of the racetrack down below the yellow line. It's a momentum racetrack. You just want to keep that thing wound up. That's what Brent Moffitt's trying to do now, trying to wind that double zero up so he can reel in the six of Darrell Wallace Jr. as the top two are starting to reel in the slower lap traffic here. New crew chief on board Darrell Wallace Jr.'s car this year as well. Dave McCarty, who we know from the Camping World Truck Series, was a crew chief at Spears Manufacturing Team for a number of years. He's on the pit box for Darrell Wallace Jr. Closing the gap, Brett Moffitt getting ever so close to the back bumper of Darrell Wallace Jr. now. See Michael Cherry just in front of this group and that zero or in the eight. Remember, he spun, actually had a little help from his teammate earlier to bring out the most recent caution, came onto pit road, and now it doesn't look like that car is running near as well as it was earlier. Yeah, he moved up the racetrack, certainly could have damaged those tires in that spin. Brett Moffat has closed the gap now all over the back bumper of Darrell Wallace Jr. Just about halfway through this one, Brett Moffat, this car seems to be getting a little bit stronger or Darrell Wallace Jr.'s car is falling off just a touch. Brett Moffat with a good run on the inside of the track. Contact is made between he and Darrell Wallace Jr. Wallace Jr. able to stay in front. Fired a, fired a shot across the bow there a little bit, didn't he? Here's a good battle between Eddie McDonald and the nine of Chase Elliott. They're battling for that 10th spot. Look at how low Chase Elliott goes on the racetrack. Wow. He had, he had room for another car beside him below the yellow line. While these two settle it for 10th, still a battle for the lead up front. Here comes the double zero of Brent Moffitt. Moffitt on the inside now of Darrell Wallace Jr. Great side-by-side -side battle. Oh, a little bit more contact. Eight tires are better than four, and Brent Moffitt's going to use all eight. Here he goes, trying to get by that six of Darrell Wallace Jr. What's really funny is when he's running behind him, he has all four tires below the yellow line, and now that he's racing side-by-side, -side, his, his left sides are on the yellow line. Darrell Wallace Jr. trying to pay back Brett Moffitt. Tried to get the to the back bumper of that race car, but now it doesn't look like he's going to be able to. Here comes Brett Moffitt taking the lead at the halfway point. Boy, it looks like that car is so good up off the corner. Able to get the power down, not spin the tires at all. Now there's some pretty heavy lap traffic. Now we'll see who gets through it the best. A double zero, Brett Moffat trying to get by the 64 of Rick Godovic. Going to move by on the inside. Rick stays in the bottom lane and gives him the apron. <laughs> They're driving on the inside of this racetrack. And then when they get to the straights, they go to the wall. We talk about this racetrack not having a whole lot of banking, and it certainly doesn't. But it's definitely flatter down there where Brett Moffat's running, but there's just more grip down there. 12 degrees of banking when you're on the racing surface, but the apron, not nearly as much. So Brett Moffat now continuing to put cars a lap down. That was the 54 of Julian Alboracen. Cody Hodson, the 03 car. Had a top 10 finish in his debut at Greenville this year. About to lose another lap to our race leader. Problems for Chase Elliott. He makes the hard left turn. It's a right front tire that's down. Tough break for Chase Elliott. Four crew members allowed over the wall. We talk about not being able to change tires, but obviously that tire flat on the wheel, the NASCAR officials will allow them to change that tire. What a disappointment after his fourth place finish to start the season. Now, at least one lap down, he'll be probably two laps down before the he gets back out on the racetrack and competitive. When you lap this racetrack at 15 or 16 seconds, more than likely, Chase is probably going to end up three laps down after that pit stop. Darrell Wallace Jr. now following the double zero of Brett Moffitt. For the first half of this race, it was all Darrell Wallace Jr. Now Brett Moffitt has decided to take the point, and he begins to work through the slower lap traffic. Next on his list, the 37 of Ryan Lynch. Daniel Suarez, the 12 car is next. Darrell Wallace Jr. slips a little bit, loses some more ground to Brett Moffitt. Suarez, as you mentioned, taking the preferred line around the racetrack, but Brett Moffitt goes to the inside. Suarez essentially doing double duty this year will run the full NASCAR Mexico series as well as the majority of these East races. Suarez out of Monterey, Mexico. Brett Moffitt now able to negotiate his way through the slower trap 
traffic better than Darrell Wallace Jr. So a big gap between one and two now. Some slide the back in a little bit up off the corner when he came off the transition from the apron the flat of the racetrack onto the banking. Has to be careful not to not to abuse those rear tires. When he got his first win he was the youngest pole and race winner in series history. That was back when he was 16 years nine months old. Well he is a wily veteran now at the age of 18. <laughs> wily veteran that's for sure. Now stuck behind that 46 of Brandon Godovic. Father son duo. Brett has top five finishes in the points both his full time years and in 09 and 2010. A little bit of contact with the 24 of Zach Germain. Again, Germain had problems on the front stretch got into the turn four wall and now blocking the double zero of Brett Moffat as he's trying to get by Brandon Godovic trying to stay on the lead lap with that 46 car you see that while Brett Moffat has been trying to get by these slower lap cars that's allowed the six of Darrell Wallace Jr. to close the gap once again nobody in between first and second right now Darrell Wallace Jr. running second just in front of him Brett Moffat Sergio Pena still holding on to the third spot. Zach Germain had trouble. There's Michael Cherry with problems again. Right rear tire is down on that eight car. So he makes the hard left turn. He'll go back onto pit road. They'll have to continue working on that race car. We saw the nine of Chase Elliott on pit road earlier after they had to change the right front tire of that car. Now the zero eight of Clay Campbell just in front of our race leader. <laughs> and there's a rookie stripe on the back of that 08. Yeah, great to see Clay Campbell out here having fun. Oh, Chad Boat is around in the 98. Looked like he had some contact from the 27 of Cale Conley. Short track racing. Let's take another look. There, there. There's a 27 of Cale Conley. He does get into the left rear quarter panel of Chad Boat right in front of our leaders. Around goes Boat. Caution comes out once again. It's the fourth one of the day. This time it'll be Brett Moffitt who will have the preferred line on the restart. To his outside will have to be that six of Daryl Wallace Jr. Stay with us here on Speed. Welcome back. We'll see how Brett Moffitt handles the lead spot on the restart. Daryl Wallace Jr. on his outside. Sergio Pena and Matt Benedetto still making up row number two. Out of turn four, green flag back in the air. Great restart for Brett Moffitt. Darrell Wallace Jr. able to get down in front of his teammate Sergio Pena. Now De Benedetto is on the high side. Oh, a oh, little bit of contact. De Benedetto gets into the back of the six. Darrell Wallace Jr. into the wall. How about that? Yeah, lost a bunch of positions. They're trying to work his way back in line right in front of the 71 of Eddie McDonald. Let's see what happened here on this restart. See them exiting turn number two. Darrell Walsh Jr. moves up. Matt DiBenedetto had his nose up in there. Didn't ha quite have him cleared. They made a little bit of contact and into the outside wall. Darrell Wallace Jr. goes. Matt DiBenedetto battling for position with Sergio Pena. Doesn't want to give up that room. Yeah, and I don't think he expected the six of Darrell Walsh Jr. to come up there. He was battling so hard side by side with a four. I don't think he had any idea that he was coming. Just a little bit of contact and into the wall. The six goes. Derek Pernasiglia, what are they saying on the radio? This year is going to be another tough year for Darrell Wallace Jr. He made contact with the 15 of Matt DiBenedetto and ended up getting turned around. After talking with Dave McCarty, who's the crew chief for Darrell Wallace Jr., Darrell came over the radio and said, I'm okay. I'm just upset that I'm going to have to come back through all of that traffic again. And Phil, this is a situation where patients are going to have to prevail here. He doesn't want to get aggressive and angry. Yeah, you don't want, you don't want to knock the front fenders off the car, so you definitely have to be careful. But he certainly has his work cut out for him. So the top competition early on for Brett Moffat has now slid back quite a few spots. Matt DiBenedetto in front of the four of Sergio Pena. Max Gresham has tucked in behind that four. There's a 14 of Coleman Presley. He rounds out the top five right now. Coleman Presley running in the fifth spot. Max Gresham fourth. Sergio Pena is third. Just in front of him that 15 of Matt DiBenedetto running second. Another good showing by that new X team racing has two cars right now up in the top five with De Benedetto and Presley. 
Rep Moffat running so strong out in front. And after Darrell Wallace Jr. got into the wall, a big gap between he and Matt DiBenedetto. Those two cars were definitely the class of the field. I don't think anybody else is able to run with that double zero of Brett Moffitt or the six of Darrell Walsh Jr. Obviously now Darrell Walsh Jr. is playing catch up. The straightaway between one and two. Now Brandon Haley in the 51 all over the back bumper of Derek Randstrom. That 32 car is owned by Dale Quarterly, former winner in the series. And we'll see him in that car again some more this year. If his next race behind the wheel will be Richmond. Scheduled to be Richmond. That's right. Just in a couple weeks. Brett Moffitt has a straightaway lead over the 15 of Matt DiBenedetto as he starts to catch the slower lap traffic problem on the racetrack. That's the 27 of Cale Conley around. Look like Zach Germain made a little bit of contact with the outside wall trying to get around the outside. Let's see if we can take a look. A little bit of con a little bit of chain reaction. Look like something happened to the 66 of Benny Gordon. The 27 slowed. Watch. See, Ben. Oh, he got sideways. That's what happened. And then the 32 of Derek Ramstrom got in the back of Kale Conley. So Conley goes around, brings out the fifth caution of the day. Brett Moffat out front of this field. Field all in line behind Brett Moffat here at the South Boston 150. Just over 30 laps to go. Green flag in the air. Another good restart by the double zero of Moffat. The Benedetto now side by side with Pena for second. Here comes Sergio Pena to the inside of Matt DiBenedetto. He'll take second away from DiBenedetto. Pena all over the back bumper of Brett Moffitt. Gresham tried to stick his nose on the inside of DiBenedetto, not able to do it. This is what we expected out of Sergio Pena a year ago, battling up front for leads. It's safe to say that this is his best race since that all-star race back in 2010. Sergio Pena running second just in front of Matt DiBenedetto. Max Gresham holds down the fourth spot. See Moffat open up a couple car links now over Pena. Brett Moffat has had such a strong race car. Since the drop of the green flag, he had to deal with Darrell Wallace Jr. early on in the race. You see a lot of damage to the 71 of Eddie McDonald. I think that just happened here just a few moments ago. Ramstrom's trying to get to the inside of Eddie McDonald. There's Chase Elliott. Remember, he lost three or four laps with a flat tire. Brandon Haley, the 51, inside of Chase Elliott. The nose of that 71 about to come off. NASCAR will probably be looking at black flagging that race car. Out in front, though, the double zero. Still holding on to position. Sideways is the 51 of Brandon Haley. He made contact with a nine of Chase Elliott. Rep Moffat running so smooth now. We see the battle for ninth. Alex Bowman, DJ Shaw. Shaw with some damage to the left side of that race car in the 60. Alex had a great run at Greenville. His first time out in the series, finished in a third spot. Back in 2008, he won the most USAC races across all their platforms, the most of anybody. There goes the 32. Derek Ramstrom getting by that 71 of Eddie McDonald. Now Chase Elliott's going to try to get by as well, but Chase a couple laps down. He is able to get by. A lot of damage on Eddie McDonald's car. The NASCAR officials have left him on the racetrack thus far. So he'll continue to run short track racing. Just 25 laps to go. Brett Moffat in front of Sergio Pena. Now we see Eddie McDonald coming to pit road. He may very well have a left front tire rub, so as well as a right front tire rub. He's got a he's got quite a few parts of that car rubbing now. Too bad for Eddie McDonald. Six time winner in this series. You come down pit road just like for Chase Elliott. You come down pit road for any any time at all. If you came down pit road and didn't stop in your pits, you'd lose at least a couple laps. Brett Moffat continuing to click the laps away under 25 to go. Just about a full straightaway lead right now over Sergio Pena. Nobody has anything for Brett Moffat. It doesn't look like. Darrell Wallace Jr. has not been able to fight his way back from that earlier contact with the outside wall. DJ Shaw now in the 60s still trying to get by. That's 16 of Alex Bowman. Remember, these cars are racing inside the top 10. 
DJ Shaw losing ground to the 16 now. Quite a bit of body damage on that 16 car of Alex Bowman's. Your top three still Brett Moffitt, Sergio Pena, Matt DiBenedetto. Racing continue all the way around this track, and you see the gap now beginning to build between Bowman and Shaw. Daniel Suarez on the outside of Ryan Lynch. Battle for the 16th position. There's Michael Cherry, the eight car. Remember, he's had trouble. Rick Godovic in the 64 behind this group of three. Michael Cherry brought out our third caution of the day back on lap 48. And then the car just hasn't come to it. These two stay side by side. Daniel Suarez on the outside here. Brett Moffitt still trying to get by the slower lap traffic, catching up to that 0 3 of Cody Hodgson. This battle continues for the 16th position. Ryan Lynch is going to take it. He has a preferred line, and now the bumper in front of that 12 of Daniel Suarez. Well, Michael Cherry is going to try to make his way by on the inside of Suarez. Just behind him, that's 64 of Rick Godovic. Interesting story. Rick Godovic and his son Brandon both running for Rookie of the Year this year. <laughs> both with yellow stripes on the back bumpers. Rookie of the Year, father and son. I don't think Rick started racing until he was in his 40s, so came to the sport late in life. Rick, 48 years old now. Not that being in your 40s of is course, late in life. Of course not. Son Brandon, just 19. Rigodovic trying to get by Daniel Suarez while we see the eight Michael Cherry on the back bumper of that 37 of Ryan Lynch. Got a glimpse of Brett Moffat creeping into the picture. He's behind this group. There he is right there. He's behind the 64 now of Rigodovic. Going to the outside. Moffat, we've seen run the entire car to the inside of that yellow line. Now running a little bit different line around this racetrack. There's Darrell Wallace Jr. He's made his way back up into the top time, uh, top ten. Right now he's in the eighth spot. And started on the pull after getting into Matt Benedetto, and then the wall dropped all the way back out of the top ten, but has worked his way back up to the eighth spot. There's Andrew Smith, the 62. That's the seventh place car. Coleman Pressler, the 14. That's sixth. I'm impressed with Darrell Wallace Jr. He's been able to patiently work his way back up not be too aggressive yet as I say that he about puts the bumper to the 62 of Andrew Smith. Meanwhile Brett Moffitt again a full straightaway lead now over our second place car of Sergio Pena. Field lined up now around this four tenths of a mile racetrack. Moffitt. Going to the outside of that 37. Oh, That's trouble. Problems right in front of him, Michael Cherry. And he gets into Michael Cherry, your race leader, with 10 laps to go and nobody within a straightaway. Look, Look at, at the, the damage. Oh, my wow. goodness. Terminal damage for the double zero of Brett Moffitt. How could this possibly happen to a car that was so dominant? Let's take another look as he came out of turn four. There he is. He's on the outside, so he's committed to the outside. And then all of a sudden, Michael Cherry is around, and I don't think he felt like he could turn to the inside because of the 37 car being there. And Michael Cherry was starting to roll back up, so the outside was blocked off from him, too. Nowhere to go. Brent Moffitt into the side of the aid of Michael Cherry. We'll have the restart when we come back. Welcome back to South Boston 150. Derek, disappointing day for Moffitt. Well, Brett Moffat is already in the ambulance. He was out on the track, but we didn't get a chance to talk to him. But we did get a chance to talk to crew chief Mike Ricci, and he didn't look very happy as he walked down pit road. And I asked him, can you tell us what happened? And he said the eight car spun, and he decided not to get on his brakes and rolled right in front of us. Yeah, tough situation for Brett Moffat. Had the dominant car inside of 10 laps to go. Looked as though he had it locked up now. What has fallen into the lap of Sergio Pena, but the lead of this race at South Boston. Green flag goes back in the air. 
Good start by Pena. De Benedetto now on the outside, trying to sneak back up there, side by side with Gresham. Here comes Max Gresham on the inside. De Benedetto on the outside. Gresham almost gets the bumper to the floor of Sergio Pena. Gresham has it, looks to the inside. Three to go. Three laps of racing to go. Just 60 miles of racing, and it's going to come down to the final three laps. Sergio Pena just in front of Max Gresham. Matt De Benedetto hanging right in there in third. Coleman Presley right now running fourth. Two laps remaining. Just under a mile of racing to go from South Boston. Sergio Pena with the expectation so high after his all-star near win. Gresham gets sideways. It allows De Benedetto to get side by side for second. One to go. White flag comes out. A great battle for second. They're door to door. Matt De Benedetto on the inside. Gresham on the outside. They continue to fight as the four comes out of turn number four. Sergio Pena is going to win this race. Sergio Pena gets the checkers. And De Benedetto just barely holds off Gresham for second. Unbelievable battle for second. But how about Sergio Pena? gets his first win in the East Series. A little bit of congratulations, I think, from Matt De Benedetto. <laughs> I don't know if you normally hit the car that wins. I think you wave to him. Take a look at this. What a great battle for second. Wow, De Benedetto just barely edges the 18 of car aggression. We'll hear from Sergio Pena when we come back. 150 laps from South Boston are in the books, and it's a new winner, Sergio Pena in victory lane. After 150 laps, Sergio Pena comes home with his first ever NASCAR k &N Pro Series win here at the South Boston Speedway. Huge celebration all around, and the water and the soda is flying. All of the people stepping in here. Sergio, come on in here. We know a lot of people want to congratulate you, but we officially on speed want to congratulate you for picking up your first ever victory. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. Oh, my gosh. This, this feeling is unreal, you know. Had a heck of a race. Uh, you know, we were pushing it to get, get on the grid for qualifying. We were rushing, and Troy Libby did a great job of, you know, getting everything ready for that, and along with our crew chief, uh, Matt and Josh. So I got to thank them so much. Also, Ed Muckenthaler, you know, they all did a great job this weekend. Brett Moffitt had such a dominant car. Did you have anything for him until he got caught up in that wreck? You know, if, if that wouldn't happen, it would have been definitely tough. Uh, he had a great car. You know, he was he was checking out every restart. Um, you know, fortunate for me, unfortunate for him. But, uh, you know, he's, he'll definitely be back, and he'll be a tough one for this year. You know you made history by being the first winner with a composite body. Gosh, you know, it feels great. This, this feeling is unbelievable. I can't describe it. You know, the showdown two years is awesome, but, you know, this is completely different. And uh, I got to thank all the fans for coming out on a Sunday, you know, uh, for taking their time away from their families to come out here and, you know, go, keep my thoughts and prayers for everybody overseas who are going through all the tragedies over there. So, uh, you know, gosh, it's just, I don't know. I don't know what else to say. I'm speechless right now. You know, the Drive for Diversity program, Max Siegel and John Story, they did such a great job for me, and I can't thank them enough. He's on cloud right nine right now. Sergio Pena wins here at South Boston. Well, an impressive performance by the young man. Sergio Pena finally getting into victory lane. Matt Benedetto, Max Gresham, Coleman Presley, and Ryan Gifford, your top five. Darrell Wallace Jr. fights back from that contact with the outside wall for a sixth place finish. How about Clay Campbell finishing 13th in this one? Good run for him. Ben Kennedy in the 14th spot. Let's go back to Derek Furnisiglio. Derek? Was that last restart for you, your last ditch effort to catch Sergio? Yeah, that last restart was definitely my last chance. You know, I was almost inside one time and he cut me off, but you know, since Sergio and I are, are friends, I wasn't about to race him, any, race him dirty. So uh, we had a good time and hey, uh, hopefully he'll do me the same thing sometime when we get another chance. After two races, here's your unofficial point standings. Darrell Wallace Jr. made that battle back after the problems and was able to hold on to the point lead. Sergio Pena moves to second. Yeah, good battle there. Among the top five for sure. Next race, Canaan Pro Series East Richmond International Raceway. That's Thursday, May 19th. From the drop of the green flag, it looked like it was Darrell Wallace Jr.'s race, but short track racing, you never know what's just around the next turn. And that's what happened to Brett Moffitt. Right into Michael Cherry, enabling Sergio Pena to grab his first win in his young career in the KN Pro Series. Sergio Pena wins at South Boston. I don't think it's the last time we're going to see him in victory lane. Thanks for joining us here on Speed, your motorsports authority.